Hello there. So today I'm going to be looking at the Xberry Pi again. And I looked at this a um, few months back when um, Don Superfo had released an issue 4C. And since then he's been busy working, improving, enhancing the Xberry Pi. And the latest revision um, I've just received is the 4G. If I can get this up to the camera, you can see 4G on there. And this one has a good number of additions compared to the previous one I owned, which I believe was a 4C. Um, so going around it, obviously there's this riser board now. Um, the old DIN socket that was handling VGA and RGB is now gone and it's been replaced with a standard 15 pin socket which handles VGA and RGB. Um, power is still the same, VGA is still the same, but we do have some additional 3.5mm um, jack plug connectors here as well. So this is where things have been expanded. So J4 which is this one here. That is stereo audio out. And then this one here, which is now J15. You can see that. This one here is ear and mic. So you can take the audio out without any faffing around uh, on this revision of board. And you could also load and save um, via this combined ear mic. And it's the same kind of ear mic that the next has. You need a stereo one end and twin mono the other end. And then just turning it around, standard fur here, the nine pin uh, joystick port, which is J5. And then we have the PS2 connector, J3 here. And then we have the Raspberry Pi connector, the 40 pin, which is J6. Um, SD card reader, of course. And then looking at the board here, we have the place for the battery, which I don't actually have. Uh, obviously, we've got this new header now, which takes the signals from the board to feed this um, new VGA RGB port. We've still got the JTAG header port here for programming the thing. And we still have this... Um, What's that connector, is it? I think you can add a connector in order to connect up a matrix keyboard. So that's probably it for the changes. I mean, it's the VGA port and it's the audio in and out. We still have the header for the ESP module. So I'm going to stick an ESP module in here right now with the old shaky hands and the lighting isn't particularly great in here. Let's get that lined up properly. So yeah, as you can see, the ESP module really is a is a tight fit against this riser board. If you didn't want this particular connector, you can just unscrew the riser board and it just unplugs from this socket here if you didn't want to use it or if you wanted to take it out in some other fashion and stick it somewhere else, you can do that. Then, of course, the Raspberry Pi um, just fits on top and you have these posts here that you can use to secure the thing um, just get that and the pins are shorter on this one as well the pins are quite long on the 4C um, and you do have a couple of retaining nuts that this thing comes with um, I'll just Quickly get them on. Well, not quickly, but I'm uh, trying to do this while holding it for the camera. I'll probably speed this bit up because I'm having a. So, yeah, I'll just finger tighten them there. Keep the Raspberry Pi in place. Uh, 
I won't do it all the way. So you can see from a Raspberry Pi perspective that the um, USB port is facing inwards if you did need to use that for anything. Um, you might have to get some really small right angle connector or something to connect something into that. Um, not sure how you'd get this uh, HDMI um, port as well because typically the HDMI plug would probably be too big you know to stick in there but I've not actually tried it myself. So that is the 4G and it comes with the top, it comes with um, little things that you can screw on top do, do, do. I got mine with an SD card um, but I have erased it and I have put the latest distro on here um, so I can play the like Sabbatic attack so yeah, micro SD card, 16 gig, what came with it. Um, so as before, um, 5 volt um, micro USB port. Let me just plug that in. This is a switched USB cable, so it won't power it just yet. And I'm going to test this with VGA, because previously I did it with HDMI. And my setup, my capture setup, doesn't actually pass audio when I use HDMI. So I'm just going to test the um, RGB side of this. This is a RGB SCAR cable, which I got from Cool, Nob not cool Novelties, yeah? Long, long, long ago. And I think somewhere else, Retro Computer Shack also sells these cables on eBay. Um, so J15 is the ear mic, that's the one out here. Um, audio out. This one here. And I do have a TZ Arduino sitting right here. And uh, I'm going to try that. See if I can load a game. It goes into the ear mic here. Uh, I might as well plug a joystick, my 8-bit do in here and then I need to be able to interface with this thing so I need to connect something to the PS2 so I have here a splitter so that I can connect the keyboard and mouse at the same time and I have a keyboard here now these typically go in the wrong way around I'm not sure why that is um, it's just the way it is um, should really look to see which way. Okay, that one. So yeah, normally the mouse would go into green. So here's my mouse. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything. Um, if I switch on and then hold down R for RGB. Okay. Let me just select that. So yeah, Core 3.02. As I said, I uh, upgraded it. And let me just make this bigger. So as I've mentioned previously, the distribution layout has changed and this home folder is for you to put your own stuff in and the distro down the line won't be uh, making any changes to that particular folder. So just to prove this thing works, I'm going to fire up Attic Attack. Switch on my wireless controller. And there we go. Any judderiness in the game itself is down to my capture. Um, 
find it quite difficult to capture. This is also running at 50 hertz, so it's not quite as uh, fast. But it's just a demonstration anyway. So obviously the audio out is coming from the um, audio out on the next into my PC, which then captures it via OBS. Enough of that. So I'm going to test loading again um, using this TZ Extreme, which I'm just going to switch on now. So yeah, this is um, a twin mono, the red and the white, to a stereo 3.5mm. So yeah, the red in this case is, um, I'm trying to remember now, is that here? Yeah, yeah, okay. I do find it quite difficult to navigate these things because the screen is quite small and you can't really see what's coming up. Um, but let me just find something here. Well, that's you, I don't want you. I wanted to be actually, but I'm looking at this side on, so I can't really see very well. Okay. And I've not done a fat sort on this thing, so it's all over the place. Okay, so I've selected Valhalla, which is my favorite game of all time. Um, let me just switch this back to full screen. Well, actually, I'll do that in a sec. Just need to go into more, and I'll go into tape loader, and select 48K mode, because obviously Valhalla is 48K. And so if I press space on this now, I'll press play on it here, then Valhalla will load. How cool is that? Now, I've not tested it thoroughly with tape loading, because in my estimation, this Xbury Pi is probably based on the tape loading circuit from the Issue 2, and um, it had a very, very fine tolerance in terms of loading and loading ranges and such. It wasn't very forgiving. And the Kickstarter 2 Next have additional circuitry in there, which gives them a much broader range of loading. So your mileage may vary if you're loading from tape, depending on the quality of your cassette deck and um, how good the tape is, really. But it really is a great evolution of this diminutive, diminutive product. Um, and I'm kind of wondering where he can take it in future, because there's not much now apart from... Um, you know, it's missing one joystick port, and to be honest, I'm not really sure it would ever be feasible to have kind of an expansion port breakout on this thing. It's just too small. Um, so what additional functionality he may add to this generation of x -Bray Pi, I'm not sure. Um, I have heard talk of integration with some of these Pi hats. Are they called Pi hats? like laptops where you can plug a Raspberry Pi in and such like. Um, it would be nice to be able to do that and to be able to use the keyboard, you know, kind of a USB keyboard. So, you know, that may happen, I don't know. But also, um, once he's gotten around to it, you'll probably find that he'll start working on the Arctic 7 FPGA. So effectively reproducing the issue for uh, Kickstarter 2 boards in this a uh, small form factor as well, so it'll be really interesting to see what he does with that. Anyway, I'm not going to wait for this thing to load because it'll take ages. I don't think there's anything more um, I need to say about this. It's a great board, and thanks for watching.